Hi, I'm Mega Daga. I'm the Senior Product Manager here at Cadence 10 Silica. And I'm here today to talk about our new announcement in, the field, uh, in our series of AI processors, which is called DNA100. The DNA stands here for the Deep Neural Network Accelerator, which these processors are catering to. So just a brief intro on where we are. So we have, last year we announced the first version in our standalone AI processors, and which was the Vision C5. Vision C5 was the first standalone DSP which catered to the needs of AI specific requirements. And we see these needs have been ever growing in the field ranging from IoT all the way to autonomous. And that's where our next generation scalable processor is coming, which is DNA 100. DNA 100 is capable of scaling from half teramac to all the way to hundreds of teramac. I will go a little more detail into DNA 100 and to showcase what all capabilities it is doing. So first, going into the block diagram of DNA 100. DNA 100 it constitutes of two major blocks. There are a series of specialized hardware accelerators followed by a Cadence 10 Silica uh, DSP over there. These series of hardware accelerators are taking advantage of something which is inherent in these neural networks, sparsity. Sparsity is something which is present in weights while we are doing training. Sparsity is something which is present in the activation, in the data, as the data flows through the network. And that is what each and every block here will take care of and get more and more throughput and bandwidth advantage of. So the first block where we come and we do the compression, decompression. As the name states, this is where when the sparse weights and the sparse data, they come in, they are coming in the compressed form, they are getting decompressed and going into the next blocks. While they are going out of this, they are again getting compressed in the required form and they are going out. And what it leads to is bandwidth reduction. Bandwidth reduction is something we need a lot because to take care of from the system power efficiency. There is a huge data overhead uh, which is getting created when the data is getting loaded from the system memory into the local memories. And reducing that in every form is advantageous. So doing it for both activation and for weights help in overall bandwidth reduction. Once the bandwidth reduction is taken care of and we have decompressed it following a couple of blocks, where it leads to is the sparse compute engine. Sparse compute engine is another place where the sparsity is getting taken advantage of. But here, it's getting taken advantage in the compute area. So the, for the compute reduction, what we are doing is we are avoiding multiplication by any of the zeros, be it in activation or in in weight. So now we are reducing our overall compute and hence increasing our throughput. So we are able to get much more performance out of a system compared to what physical a array, Mac array is actually capable of giving. And that's where we get one of the biggest push from. Another thing about this sparse compute engine is it's been such efficiently and flexibly designed that it gives us very high Mac utilization or Mac occupancy rate. By giving the high Mac occupancy rate, we are able to get a very high Mac utilization. And hence, because of those two contributing factors, we are able to get much higher throughput than what we are seeing in the market. Once it's done with all the computation, it goes through the quantization phase, which I'm not showing over here. Once the quantization phase is done, it will go into the non-convolution phase where we have a pooling block and a vector processing unit. This is the hardware block where we take care of all non-convolution layers. Non-convolution layers like the pooling I mentioned, like ReLU, or the vector processing unit, which will take care of activation functions like sigmoid, tan edge, element-wise operations, and so on and so forth. So overall, this package will take care of most of the layers which are present in a neural network. With all these hardware components, what we have is over here a 10 silica DSP. This 10 silica DSP caters to several things which are needed. First thing, it's connected with TIQ interfaces, and these TIQ interfaces make it tightly coupled with these hardware blocks, and it sends these commands, control commands, into these hardware blocks as needed. 
Another aspect which this Tensilica DSP brings is programmability. Neural networks are always evolving. They are one of the rapidly evolving fields. And we know in the future, we will be getting more and more new layers coming in, which might not get catered by the hardware blocks which are present. And in that scenario, you can use the Stensilica DSP to get them programmed and function at a much very, very high optimum performance. So it brings the future proofing. Another thing this block brings is extensibility. Extensibility by having tie extensions. Tie extension is something which is an inherent thing of our extensor cores. A customer can add their own custom instruction sets onto this DSP to cater to their own specific layers. That's what extensibility brings. And another thing it brings is the custom layers. Custom layers are something we get enabled through our neural network compiler, and they can get used by over here. So overall, with all this uh, structure inside DNA 100, we are able to cater to the key needs and the requirements and the trends which we are seeing in the field of AI. With all this, DNA 100 is able to give you 4.7x more perf compared to what we are seeing in the market for a similar array size. It's also able to give us 2.3x more power efficiency, more perf per watt compared to what we are seeing in the market at a similar array size. And with all the above, it will come with a complete AI software platform to enable all these processing seamlessly on this processor. So with that, I will wrap up the introduction to DNA 100. We will look forward to you to join to our next sessions, upcoming sessions next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.